Hi everyone, James Robinson here. This is part three, the third and final part of my Ping Factory tour. Let's get straight to it. Okay, so the next stage of the process is setting that loft and light. Yeah. So we talked about before the clubs being cast around the blue light bulb. Here we use a digital loft and line machine to measure what the loft and line of the club currently is and then it spits out information on the screen so that the operator can know what adjustments need to be made accordingly. So if I can just jump in here one second. So inside here there's a camera. The camera reads the bottom groove of a ping iron. So the bottom groove of a ping iron is always painted white. Yeah. That spits out the information and tells the operator what adjustments need to be made. So if we put a club on here and measure it, you'll see the lion loft change accordingly. So this is a set of I2 pens, standard length. So we, in order to get this to the blue line, we need to make the line one and a quarter degrees more upright. And the loft needs to be made a quarter of a degree weaker. So there's no better way to set loft and line than a bit of brute force. So you try to golf them in the vise using a hammer. on the scale, and he failed it. <laughs> well done. <laughs> he's, not, he's not normally that good, I can show you. We're normally here for 10 minutes. <laughs> so if we go again, you'll see this one. Again, this one, the loft is great. The lie just needs to be two and a quarter degrees more upright. So as long as he hits this golf club straight and doesn't affect the loft, it should be all right. Talking quarter of a degree, quarter talking of a degree. minimal yeah. adjustments, but it has to be right. If Harry here was having a bad day and he couldn't quite get it right, the system won't allow him to send it through incorrectly. Yeah. So he couldn't just think no one's looking, I'll pass it through. Yeah. It's quality control checks in every stage of the process. Yeah. The system won't allow it. So we always know every loss and lie is bang on. I can see that Harry has such a, a delicate touch with the hammer. One knock with the hammer was equating to a quarter of a degree movement. I don't know if you work that out or not, but that's exactly what was happening every time. So, is, yeah. People, initially when people start to try and learn this part of the, of the job, they're scared to hit yeah, it. Yeah. The clubs are cast, the clubs are designed. If you look at the back of any ping iron, You'll see we've got a little notch cut out. Yeah. That was designed by Carsten so that whenever you change the loft and the light, it always moves us from the same position. Yeah. The clubs are designed to be hit, designed to be moved, but well, people just get scared to do it. Yeah. So we'll leave Harry alone. Yeah. Thanks, Harry. <laughs> so Mike's just talking me through how a set of irons will be made throughout the line. And one thing that gets me is, Mike, do you know what everyone's name is? Yes, yeah, I tried to. 150 staff? Yeah. He's saying, come this, Harry, that. Unbelievable. I can't remember the name of all my lessons, never mind everybody who works in a factory. I, I think it's, it's part of the thing culture. Because we're family owned, it's really important that everybody is a name, not a number. Yeah. And we spend a lot of time making sure that we learn people's names and make sure we interact. And everyone's a team, it doesn't matter what position you are in the company, everyone pulls together to make sure that we're building and assembling the best equipment that we possibly can. And that makes one hell of a staff do at Christmas. <laughs> We are a dry company, we're a non-drinking company. Oh, okay. So it's, uh, it's not that rounded. <laughs> I'll put my CV back in the car then. <laughs> A 
high frame brush in there that just moves before sending the club out. Uh, another quality control check we do when clutching for, uh, for left is we have a green light. Now when the golf club's put in the right position, if I show you here, the green light comes on, which allows the machine to move and be cut. Yeah. When the green light's not on, you well, can't not. cut. Yeah. So you can never cut it to, uh, to an incorrect length. You'll see the machine at the back move back and forth depending on the depending on the club that's being uh, being built. stage to put a unique serial number on the hosel of the golf club. Yeah. So every set of King Golf Clubs has a unique serial number that's unique for that particular set. Yeah. So it identifies when the clubs were made, who made them, the specifications of the club, where they were sold to, and we engrave it using this machine you see here. serial numbers of every King Golf Club that's ever been built on a big worldwide database. So if you have, if you find yourself an old set of I2 irons from 1984 and you want to know the history of it, you can call up and quote the serial number and off the back of that we'll be able to give you some history of it as well. So it's, it's great. If anyone loses a club or wants to add to their set, yeah. then you can quote the serial number and it'll be matched in yeah, yeah. with the exact same specification, which is a really nice one. The things that I get from all this is the pride that goes into the work of making the thing golf club. I imagine that other brands won't put the serial numbers on and be able to ring 20 years later to find out that Barry made them in Gainsborough on the 6th of September at 10 to, 10 to 12. Yeah, it's time for them, isn't it? Yeah, time, isn't it? Yeah. But on the next stage is what we call feral in the golf club. So the feral of a pink iron always sits a couple of millimetres thicker than the hosel. Yeah. So we trim a little bit of the plastic off so it's a smooth transition between ferrule and hosel. Yeah. We use a little bit of acetone just to bring it back to its natural colour. Yeah. Once that's done, we then move on to taping and gripping. Next stage is taping. Now, in my opinion, this is the hardest job in the factory because I've never mastered it. But the guys say that once they've mastered it, it's the easiest job. So it's rotating the grip tape while pulling the masking tape and spinning the golf club at the same time. Really efficient way of taping the golf club. Yeah. And the Solheim's never want the tape to be put down straight and wrapped around. You yeah. always felt you could feel a bit of a ridge at the back. Absolutely, yeah. Trip. So this way works pretty well. It's an efficient way to tape, plus it means that you don't feel anything under the grip as well. So again, we strap the golf club in a double vise. We use the laser beam coming down from the top so that we can make sure the grip goes on nice and straight. Then we use a substance called latoxane, which is very similar to white spirit, but it's anti-flammable and odorless. So if there was a fire or there was an incident within the factory, then at least the place to catch fire. And again, you use the laser beam just to go down the different markings. So one at the front, one in the middle, and one at the back to make sure that's on nice and straight. The right grip, the right lock, the right line. So what we need to do now is swing weight the golf. Yeah. You know, it's important that people swing the the right weight for them. One of the final stages now is quality control. So it's a chance to examine the product, make sure we're happy with it, make sure there's no scratches, no damage, clean the shafts down as well because you see the amount of fans yeah. touch the product on the way through. Um, all our grips are colour coded. Um, so white is our, the butt end of, uh, is white, is our yeah. standard size, and then it's gold or orange to get larger. So we introduced this mirror at the back so that the guys can look and see exactly what size grip and make sure the right grip's on there. Before we had the mirror, it'd be a case of pulling each product off one at a time, have a look, 
put it back. So the final process is what we call EOP or end of process. That's a chance to scan the bird certificate to say it's been completed, start wrapping the product up, getting ready for packaging, and then assign it to the end of barrow and shelf, which will then produce the shipping document to the team that you saw before. Yeah. And that process, you're looking around about 55 minutes. Okay, that's not bad then. Yeah. How many sets would you look to make in a day, do you think, on one line? Um, it can vary. I mean, it depends on, on demand. Yeah. But comfortably, you make probably 12, 1,300 irons per day. Yeah. Wow. So it's, uh, yeah. it's pretty good. This cell here is our works department or our tour department. So this is a cell slightly separate to the rest of the factory. And these guys are responsible for building all our European tour player equipment, our elite up and coming player equipment as well. And then really anything outside of the standard product mix yeah. as well. One thing I love about- Are you telling me these people will build my clubs, Michael? Uh, <laughs> nah. <laughs> Maybe. You've seen the course logs, mine are getting built over there. Uh, the process, the one thing I love about Pink, the inventory and the equipment you see our tour players use is exactly the same inventory as you, I, or any yeah. of your listeners or viewers would, would get. The difference we do in the tour department is perhaps more concentrating on the loft of a driver. So, yeah. for example, uh, Bubba Watson is a great example. He likes a driver that has 8.25 degrees of loft on his driver head. Yeah. So, therefore, we'd want to make sure it's 8.25, not 8 degrees or 8.5 yeah. or 9. So it's really homing in on those kind of extra special um, yeah. circumstances that makes a difference for our guys out on tour. Yeah. And I guess that is right, because if you if you imagine, so my dad, my dad plays off, I don't even know, he's gonna kill me for that. <laughs> uh, I think my dad plays off about 18 or 19. He isn't gonna know the difference between an eight degree driver and 8.25 degree driver, probably even a 15 degree driver knowing my dad. <laughs> but if you put this in the hands of Bubba Watson or Lee Westwood, Lee Tyrrell Westwood, Hatton. Tyrrell Hatton, they're going to know the difference. They're going to be able to spot the difference, not only the ball fly, but probably even in looking down at the golf club. So it's imperative that these things are absolutely bang on for the players. That's it. In this department as well, we also do things like custom paint jobs. So Darren here, he does. Uh, he's responsible for all our, our paint work. Okay. Um, this is something that I think it started with Gregory Havray of all people. He wanted the French colours on his golf club. Yeah. We painted it for him. Darren did a great job. He put it on social media, and then other players. Oh. So you get whether it's national flags, football teams, yeah. uh, all initials, initials, yeah. favourite colours, anything like that is done within this department. Right. right. And it's not because the guys on the line can't do it, it's just a time consuming element. Yeah. And we're trying to get through and, and, and get as, as many products built in the right yeah. time on the line. But in the works department, you've got a bit more time. Than Yeah, so it's, I suppose it's more of a personal feel to the club, isn't it, for the player? Yeah. A little bit. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. I mean, anything that's outside the standard product mix as well, if we if we had someone with the Watson's grip requirements, yeah. that would be built in here as well, because yeah. the time consuming... So you know I'm ordering first thing tomorrow morning, don't you? 13 under the top and 15 <laughs> under the bottom. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll avoid that one. <laughs> it's not the place to be on the tour short when Bubba needs a new setting. <laughs> So here we have the evolution of the ping irons and we have 
is it would you say every single ping iron pretty much every iron every ping years, iron from ever been released so late 60s to present day comment below guys who here has used one of those i know i have also we have the same with the drivers I look behind me here and there's loads and loads of gold putters. Mike, could you tell us a little bit about what the gold putter tradition yeah, is definitely. all about? This is, this is a special tradition and people love this one. Uh, so since 1975, the Solimes have been rewarding any player who won on tour, whether that's the gents or the ladies tour, and if they used a ping putter to win, they would get a replica made. So if you want a normal tour event, it'd be a gold-plated putter made to the same length, the same loft, the same lie, and it'd be engraved with your name, the tournament you won, and the year you won it in. If you were then to win a major, your putter would be solid gold. Okay? So, wow. Solid gold. So we make two of every variety. Good job you didn't have Tiger through the Millennium, weren't you? <laughs> so uh, every time we make two, one gets given to the player for them to keep for their uh, memorabilia. Yeah. And one ends up in this area, the gold putter vault that you see Bubba having a selfie, where we've now got over 3,000 gold putters from 1975 through to present day. Wow. Uh, Westy, he got a number of gold putters, but he's got more gold putters than anybody else in the vault. Yeah. 58 gold putters. Wow. Through tournament wins, and if you're on a winning Ryder Cup side, as yeah. well, and order of merit. Okay. So he's got in the region of 44 gold putters. All five of Seve's major wins were using a ping putter as well. Do you have any we could look at? I've got one. One. We've borrowed it. Very little one, so you can probably try and guess who the player is. <laughs> no offence. But uh, this one belonged to Andy Sullivan. I'm allowed so, to touch it. Yeah, of course you can. <laughs> so that's a gold-plated one back in 2016 when he won the Joburg Open. So uh, that's the length that Andy has his putter, the same grip, the same loft, the same lie. Same shaft, um, but uh, yeah. it's, uh, I think it's about 30 and a half inches in length. But yeah, it's a cool, uh, cool tradition. Oh, sure. In fact, I bet that posture looks good, does it? It does, yeah. Suits you. In. <laughs> Sold. <laughs> Let's put this away before. Uh... There you go. Most major wins, I think, if you want pub knowledge. Uh, Tom Watson, I think, okay. won eight majors um, in his day, uh, yeah. using a lot of the time that ping pal. Yeah. Yeah. This is an original 1A, so the, the putter responsible for the name of the company. Oh, okay. So if you want to hit a ball with that. Yeah. You can. <laughs> there you go. This is the sound that started it all, Mark, yeah? The sound that started it all. That is unbelievable. It's isn't a it? cracking ring to it, hasn't Let's it? Have a close up and see if they can hear that. Now I haven't turned the volume up on that. That is actually what this putter sounds like. No wonder the company is called. Okay, guys, that has been an unbelievable experience. If ever you get the opportunity to come down to Ping, come down to Gainsborough, get in the factory and see how not only your clubs are made, but Lee Westwood's clubs, Tyrrell Hatton's clubs, Andy Sullivan's clubs. Miguel Angel Jimenez clubs, not his cigars, just the clubs. You'll get to see how they're made right here. It's not something that everyone gets the chance to do, but I'm so grateful. And Mike, thank you ever so much for the talk. Pleasure. What this Great guy time. doesn't know about Ping isn't worth knowing. Thank so, you. do you want to finish this off, Mike? All I want you to say is thank people for watching. Yep. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Okay. See you soon. Okay. So, thank you for watching. Please make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you soon. What a legend. Now let's go do a club fitting. I need some new iron.